how old do you have to be to change the world? 15 years old. Brill, a revolutionary system for millions of blind people around the world by Louis Brill. 14 years old. The first electronic TV system used to broadcast critical news and events for millions by Philo Farnsworth. And this next invention, to me, is even more special. An 11-year-old named Frank, after a long day of play, accidentally leaves his cup of soda with the stirring stick inside on the top of the porch. After a cold night, he realizes that his cup of soda is now frozen solid like an icicle. He tries it out, and it tastes pretty good. He tries it out again, this time sharing it with his friends. It's a hit. He adds more flavor, shares with more people. It's an even bigger hit. After years of refining his idea, Frank Epperson finally patented his invention, the popsicle, to share with the entire world. It expanded enormously and became worth millions later on. Most people would have thrown that cup of soda away. What would you have done with that cup of soda? Some recent research at institutions like UCLA have been able to show that adolescent and young adult brains are thirstier for exploration and learning, while older adults are more accustomed to working off prior experiences and patterns of thought. More simply put, most young people are more willing to try radically different ideas and maybe just aren't as afraid to fail. This is something that I feel is so important and makes young people unique. An analogy I can use is the story of elephant rope. The story goes that one day, a traveler visits an elephant habitat and notices that the bigger, older, larger elephants aren't being confined in metal cages, but with just a small piece of rope tied to their leg. Curious, the traveler asks the trainer why the elephants haven't even tried to break free yet. The trainer's reply may surprise you. You see, when these elephants were younger and weaker, this rope was enough to hold them back. As they got older, they continued to believe that same rope would hold them back, so they never even tried to break free. It's super important to encourage young people to get out of their comfort zones so they aren't defined by the status quo. I dare you to break the rope, seen or unseen. In this analogy, the rope does not get stronger. The elephant gets stronger. Somehow, children grow stronger into adults but are shackled by a defeated mindset. Wow, you grow stronger, but your problems do not. The willingness to try something different starts young. But why is the time now, you may ask? What is the big difference between now and 50 years ago? The answer is simple. Time, information, and opportunities are much different today. I mean, can you believe it? The entire Back to the Future trilogy now takes place in the past. The current generation is the first ever to begin school with the World Wide Web, and Kevin McAllister is now older than his mom at the time Home Alone was released. Times are different and dynamically changing, and the key deal breaker is the access and implementation of technology. Quick question, would you rather do research like this image or would you rather do research like this image? Through technology, the key breakthrough findings aren't just being shared among the top PhDs, but everyone, you, me, and the rest of the world. You see, it's the intersection of these two ideas, the curiosity of the young mind and the exciting technology age, that really makes the case that now is the time for young thinkers, questioners, and innovators to make an impact. When we ask questions, we can find our answers like that. We can build off of other people's failures and learn from their mistakes. Teachers are contributing more than ever. We can now get the skills we need from a quick YouTube tutorial, and breakthrough findings are just seconds away. People can get the skills they need to implement their own ideas faster than ever before now. Think about that. People can get the skills they need to implement their own ideas faster than ever before now. We've now made the case that the time is now, but as writer Catherine Patterson once said, a dream without a plan is just a wish. A great idea is a very promising start, but needs to be followed through with persistence. An idea that's never shared can never be appreciated or positively impact others. Let me give you an example. Long ago, 
Flexible glass was said to have been invented in the Roman Empire under Tiberius Caesar. The story goes that a glass was presented by a craftsman to Caesar, but when dropped, it didn't shatter, it just dented. Amazed by what he saw, Caesar asked if the craftsman had shared the secrets of the invention to anyone else. Caesar, possibly scared of the effects the incredible product could have, burned down the craftsman's workshop so the idea could never be shared. The idea, unfortunately, became a lost invention. Think about the impact this idea could have had. How do you bring about meaningful change? How do you ensure that a great idea does not go lost? I can share with you some of my own experiences. I began my journey in dementia research by learning that certain plants were known to help treat dementia patients in the past. Simple and amazing plants could help treat and save someone's life. It was fascinating and amazing to think that the cures for some of the most deadliest diseases could be in simple plants. Simple plants could have an impact on someone's life. Over time, I worked with the mentor and was able to essentially identify a way to modify existing plants to improve their likelihood in treating dementia. I didn't wake up one day and come up with this idea. It just started off with an initial question, and with the help of technology, I was able to answer those questions, find and connect to people that could help me, building up to a final product. You hear the end product, but what you don't hear most of the time are the challenges and struggles I faced along the way. The best part of this journey, however, is that it can be replicated. It can be replicated with your idea. Whether it's a simple, fun game for kids, or an organization designed to inspire people in their community, I believe the general obstacles are the same. The first major obstacle I faced was finding and seeking experienced individuals and role models or mentors. When going out for a party or dressing up, we often ask our friends for advice on our outfits, even the ones that wear the same t-shirt and pants every day. When going out for ice cream, we often ask our friends for recommendations on where to go. But rarely will young people ask for advice when it comes to pursuing their life's calling. Think about that. We have talented young minds, but we need more mentors in the lives of these kids, building them up, developing them, training them, and giving them opportunities. Let's give our young people resources and not reasons why it won't work out. In my eyes, constructive advice from a mentor or co coach will always build you up. Don't miss that. The second major obstacle goes back to mindset. For my research, I had to run thousands and thousands of tests, but in the early parts, was just unable to get it right. The failure oftentimes got me very frustrated. However, I kept trying, and after enough time, trial, and thought, I was finally able to get it right. There are many reasons why someone would have stopped without even trying. The first is just the pure fear of failure, unable to accept the fact that something could go wrong. Stepping out of your comfort zone, knowing and acknowledging the risk of failure, all goes back to that elephant rope story. The second reason goes back to mindset. Entrepreneur Ryan Blair said it best, if it's important to you, you'll find a way. If not, you'll find an excuse. I'm a believer that with the correct mindset, any obstacle, barrier, or hurdle can be overcome. Be critical of your ideas, but always stick with your passion and seek out promising opportunities. With the proper guidance and mindset, I've personally been able to make strides, and I'm confident that you can too. My research journey is far from over, but I'll continue to take what I've learned to help other young people reach their dreams on various platforms. Frank Epperson turned a mistake into something great. What's your mistake that's gonna change the world? Aim to implement your ideas, because an incredible idea trapped away in a notebook isn't really worth anything. Go out and seek to make a difference, because our time is now. Thank you very much.